We can see it. All right, great to be with you all today. Um, gonna move into the, the weed world and um, see what kind of trouble we can get up to. Um, <clears throat> before we go too far though, I wanted to spend just a few minutes talking about growth staging corn. Uh, when it's kind of a basic agronomic practice and something that's really important when it comes to weed control and um, um, fertilization and, and uh, a lot of the operations that we do in corn. So <clears throat> over here on your, on your left is, is what we call the VE stage. E stands for emergence. Um, and so this is when the corn just pops out of the ground. The next stage is V1. And there's a number of different schools of thought on how to stage corn. Um, some, some agronomists prefer what's called the droopy leaf method, which is you, you basically count leaves that have a, a droop to them, like you, like you see here. Um, but more common is the leaf collar method, where it's the exposed leaf collars that you can see like here on this, on this corn plant, each of those places where a leaf blade uh, meets a stem is gonna be called a leaf collar. And every time one of those is exposed, we say that that's a leaf stage. So V1 means it has one leaf stage exposed. V3 means there's three, one, two, three. V7 has seven, 10 has 10. As soon as the tassel emerges, we move to VT, which stands for tassel. And then we enter the reproductive stages. So here's the R1, which is when the silk first emerges. And then between R1 and R6, which is a totally dried down plant, you have all of these different stages of grain development. So now we're going to check your knowledge <clears throat> and I'll ask you to take a look at this plant and, and think to yourself, what growth stage do you think this plant is? And we'll, uh, so what did you come up with? Well, um, a lot of people think it's V3, but it's actually a V4. So if you, if you see here, you'll see this is the first leaf collar, second, third, and the fourth has just come out. So this is a V4 corn plant. Um, in the olden days, when it came to weed management and corn, we relied really heavily on pre-emergent herbicides. Um, you know, atrazine was the standard for a long, long time and, 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 and other soil applied herbicides. And then in 1996, Roundup Ready Corn came onto the market and it, and it has really become the dominant feature of the, um, of the, of the corn market. The reason that, that Roundup Ready Corn is, has been so attractive is for, number one, it's a, it's a really cheap herbicide, so it's economical. It's about the safest herbicide on the, on the planet to applicators. There's no soil residual or carryover that we have to worry about when applying that herbicide. It's broad spectrum, so it'll control virtually any, any weed species that you can throw at it, whether it's annuals, perennials, grasses, or broad leaves. It is uh, good on large and small weeds, and you get very consistent performance year to year. But with this being such a, a, a good tool, we've, we've started to encounter some problems. And that is that people, it, it's, been, it's become very common to see fields that look like this. And you've probably looked over the fence and seen some of your neighbor's fields looking like this, where they wait for the weeds to get as big as possible. That way they can just spray one time, clean the field up, and then, it's, and then it, it uh, kind of, uh, carries on through the, th through the remainder of the, of the growing season. And so uh, we, have, we have tested the, the impact of this and, and tried to figure out what is the optimum growth stage when we need to make sure that we have those weeds controlled so that we don't do permanent damage to the corn. So this is a trial that we did uh, when I was back at Purdue. Um, this is over 35 locations in nine states over two years. So the really, really large set of data that went into this. And what we did in this trial was we tested, we, we, we laid out, laid out a, a whole bunch of, of individual areas that we could spray at different times. And so we went into this one area um, when the biggest weed in the plot 
was two inches tall. And we sprayed it with Roundup, one shot and then left it the whole rest of the year. Then we came into the an area next to it and sprayed when the tallest weed hit four inches. And then we did that same thing at six, nine and 12 inches. And um, <clears throat> what we found was that if you look at this, this next column, you'll see grass control. And you'll see that at the end of the year, when we went into harvest corn, when we sprayed at two inch tall weeds, we had 74% grass control at the end of the year, 84% broadleaf control. And we would say that that's fairly, we, we would probably be fairly unhappy with that when we looked, you know, had a kind of a weedy field at the end of the year. But where it really gets interesting is take a look at this last column, the percent of the weed free. So compared to just hand weeding the corn all year, we had 100% yield potential when we controlled the weeds at two inches tall and never sprayed the rest of the year and had weedy corn at the end of the field because we protected the corn when it was small. Now, here's the four inch. What, what happened there? Well, you can see our grass control was better at the end of the year, went from 74 to 84. In broad leaves, we went from 84 up to 91. And we mostly protected the yield, but we, saw, we started to see just a little bit of a decline in our, in our yield by waiting till four inch weeds. Um, and you can kind of follow that through six and nine, but let's jump all the way down here to 12 inch tall weeds. How often have you seen a field of corn with 12 inch tall weeds on it? In it? It's actually a pretty, pretty common sight. Um, we had, um, in terms of grass control, 95% grass control at the year end, just as clean as your granddaddy's scalp. We had broadleaf control, 93%. Again, we would be tickled to death with that. But look at your last column here. 79% of the corn yield that we had in the weed free. We have, even though we had great weed control, we sacrificed about 21% of our yield. And um, you can imagine that is problematic. So let's put some numbers to that. So two inch weeds, we'll call that day zero. We had 100% of the weed free uh, yield. We didn't lose any yield and we didn't lose any dollars. If we waited till we had four inch tall weeds, we, that was five days later than we sprayed two inch tall weeds. We had 97% of our weed free. We lost six bushels, which is 36 bucks, which is the price at Ogden. Uh, you know, about $6 is the, is the price at Ogden today. Um, <clears throat> if we waited, let's go all the way down to 12 inch tall weeds. We only waited 15 days. So it's two weeks delayed from when we should have sprayed. Um, we had, we lost 42 bushels on 200 bushel corn, which is about 250 bucks an acre by waiting two weeks to have excellent weed control. Do you see why this is a problem or this is potentially a problem? Um, and it's important that when we, when we use Roundup and Roundup Ready Corn that we make sure that we're paying attention to this and we don't spray any bigger, any weed, weeds any bigger than about four inches tall. Uh, this is just a, a demonstration of that. Here on your left, these four rows um, centered on that stake were sprayed when that corn was V3. And the corn, these four rows over here were sprayed at V7. And you can see there's about a two foot height difference in the height of the corn. Uh, just by, by delaying. And you can also see that the weed control looks really good when we sprayed at V7. And we can start to see quite a few escapes at V3, but the damage was done because we had weeds competing with the corn early in its life. So now we'll move into more of the applied stuff and talk about some of the overall strategies for weed control and corn. And there's really, there's three ways that we can approach this. Sometimes some people do a, a total pre-program, a pre-emergence only program. You, you lay something down at planting or shortly thereafter, and that's it. Um, another option is to do a total post-emergent program where we spray, we, we don't do anything at, at planting or early in the season. We just spray when the, when the crop has got some size. And then there's a, a combination of pre plus a post-emergent treatment. So in a pre, total pre-program, 
This is gonna be a great fit for fields with a low to moderate weed population. If you don't have a lot of weeds, these can be really, really successful. Um, it's a bad fit for, for fields with perennial weeds and with uh, fields with a lot of weeds, you know, just a heavy, heavy weed pressure. The advantage is it's a one-shot deal, one trip across the field with a sprayer and you're done, and you're going to provide control through those first six weeks of the growing season, which we've learned is very critical to protecting season-long yield. The disadvantage is we have to get moisture to activate it. Um, these are not effective on perennials and, and a lot of the tough to control annuals. And you also get a relatively early break in control and you're probably gonna have a weedy field by the end of the year, even though you may protect your yield. When we do a total post-emergent program, it's, it's really important that we provide a uh, herbicide or mix, uh, tank mix a herbicide with some residual to help carry control past where the, where, where the crop's gonna canopy and we can't make a, a, a good post application anymore. It's gonna be a great fit on, on fields with, with almost any annual weed. It's gonna be a bad fit for fields with perennial broadleaf weeds or with an awful lot of annual grasses, uh, which tend to germinate throughout the year. Advantage of this is that it's also a one pass deal and it spreads the workload out because we can plant first and then we can worry about spraying later. There's no moisture requirement, which is kind of nice when you farm in the desert. And we also get some very consistent control because you're not relying on the soil to provide herbicide or to provide a, an avenue for the herbicide to enter the weeds. The disadvantage is we have a very narrow window of opportunity for the application. As we just talked about two to four inch weeds, you've got to hit that, that uh, window or you're going to be suffering some pretty significant yield loss. And, and when we have to spray that early, it's too early to get good uh, control of our perennials. So um, the, another alternative is the pre plus the post-emergent program. So two applications, this is gonna be suited to any field. You have the advantages of consistent performance with a very wide window of application for your post-emergent uh, spray. It's gonna work on tough weeds. The disadvantage is you do have to get moisture for your pre-emergent herbicide, but you have a post-emergent herbicide in your quiver that you can go out and, and, and salvage any, any um, problems that may emerge from that. It's a two pass system. Um, so it takes a little bit more time. And then obviously two sprayer passes is gonna cost a little bit more. This is some data showing <clears throat> the effect of, of a pre plus a post-emergent program. So laying down a pre-emergent herbicide at a low rate, um, lower than we would typically do as a standalone pre-emergent, and then following it up with a post-emergent application of glyphosate. So the herbicides here, the gray would be atrazine, the blue is gonna be bicep, and the, and the orange is gonna be Lexar. And <clears throat> What, what we're showing here is just the weed control at the time of that post-emergent application, which was made at 12 inch corn. And you can see that um, they, they varied in their ability to control weeds. Um, some of them were great. Some of them were, were not as good. You can see the atrazine alone at the low rate of, let's see, it was a quart uh, or two pints. Um, it was you know, about a 50% proposition. But where this really gets interesting is check out the next slide. So at the end of the year came in and measured yields. And when we had no pre-emergent herbicide, we just came in at 12 inch corn and sprayed Roundup. We had about 204 bushels to the acre. When we put down a pre-emergent application of just atrazine, uh, which didn't provide great weed control, we, we gained four bushels by doing that. When we used bicep, it was, it was up a little bit more and we gained about 20 bushels when we used Lexar. Um, <clears throat> now let's fast forward to when we had uh, two weeks after the 12 inch corn. And, and you'll see that we, we, we dropped the, uh, the untreated control down to 181 bushel, but we were largely able to protect the yield you know, to the tune of, of saving about 30 bushels to the acre when we applied a, a pre-emergent herbicide 
which took away a lot of that, you know, just kind of gave us a little, bought us a little bit more time. And so we had a little bit more play when it came to, to making that post-emergent application. So um, I think in this case scenario, you know, in this, in this situation, you know, uh, 30 bushels at six bucks a, 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 a bushel is um, pretty, pretty significant and would easily pay for the um, cost of, an, of, an, of a pre-emergent application. So let's refresh ourselves on the principles of post-emergent herbicides and what we've learned. So regardless of the strategy that you choose, whether it's a pre-only, post-only, or a combination of pre-emergent plus post-emergent, um, all fields should be scouted two to three weeks after planting to see what's going on. Try to have a good understanding of what your dominant weed species are. What, fi know when they emerge and how they grow and and then, and then use that to plan your, your, your strategy for a specific field. If we can keep fields clean for about eight to 10 weeks after planting, yields are not going to be affected by late emerging weeds. It's, it's entirely cosmetic and it's also having an effect on future soil seed bank. Um, so, so it's important that way, but in terms of protecting yield in that very year, late emerging weeds do not really have a huge effect on it. So we've also learned that corn yield is maximized when our post-emergent herbicides are either applied following a reduced rate of a pre-emergent herbicide, which is what we do to help to, to uh, save money, or you can also apply them early post-emergent, but tank mix a residual herbicide so that you don't have to go through and make another application. It'll carry that... Uh, that uh, control in through, through canopy and, and help keep the field clean toward the end of the year. And in order to avoid yield loss from early season weed competition, it is absolutely essential that we apply an application of Roundup when the weeds are no more than four inches tall or before about 23 days after planting or at the V2 to V3 growth stage of corn much earlier than we typically target. Um, we have found and, and research from for the past uh, 25 years has shown that we, we lose a substantial amount of, of yield when we allow weeds to compete with corn when it's small. Um, and and we've, we've seen about, about two bushels of yield loss per day of delay in that post-emergent application. So pretty important to be timely there. Um, my time is spent, so I'm not going to jump into resistance, but, um, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, I, I will, uh, probably spend most of my time answering questions in the chat.